Hey guys, Nick here. In this screencast, we're going to look at how you can programmatically create transactions within your own dApp using JavaScript. Typically, when we're developing dApps, there kind of are two core things that we're looking to do. Either create transactions to send around Ether or call into smart contracts to interact with the functionality that that given smart contract exposes. In a later video, we're going to be looking at how do we actually call smart contracts. So where did we leave off? So let's go ahead. I'm on Stack Starter here, and I'm going to dive right into our vanilla stack here. Oh, we don't need that tab open. So let's take a look at the JavaScript that we have so far. Really, our application consists of two files. We have this main.js file, and we have our index.html file. Now, we are not using any kind of helper library just yet. This is vanilla JavaScript. We are just using the Ethereum provider API that is provided to us through MetaMask and other digital wallets. So we're using things like the request method, and we're also using the on method to listen for events. So, so far, we've figured out how to connect to a user's wallet, and we figured out how to listen to events for when a user changes their wallet address. So if we go ahead and actually run this application, we don't really have anything going on on the front end just yet, right? It's a very simple look and feel. We've got two buttons. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into inspect and go to our console here. Most of the output so far is on our console. So we should have an accounts variable, whoops, accounts variable that contains an array of accounts. In this case, we have one account. And you can see that should match the account that we have in our test wallet here, which it does. Now, if we go ahead and change our account, so we go to this test account, you're going to see that we did fire off an event that the account has changed. And now if we say accounts, you'll see that we have a different account here. Awesome. So we're listening for, for different account changes. And then we also have the functionality to go ahead and call in to check our balance for the given wallet that we're connected to. So here we have a, about 100 Ether. And then if we switch our account here and then hit this button, we have 104. So we're listening for events and we figured out ways to call in and check for balance information for the Ethereum balance of a given wallet. Now what we'd like to do is let's explore how we can actually transfer Ether back and forth from these two addresses. Now, it may be pretty obvious we could do this right through our digital wallet ourselves by clicking send, which is fine. That works just fine. And that's actually going to take advantage of the same exact functionality that we're about to program. So in this video, we're really exploring how that is actually done and what we can do to programmatically create transactions ourselves. So let's dive right in. I'm going to get into our editor here. And now, really, this is going to follow a very similar pattern to what, we, uh, what we've already kind of created here. So we're going to use this request method in order to call in to the JSON API that's exposed when we're connected to a Ethereum node. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use a different method to actually accomplish this. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new function. I'm going to call this function send transaction. Okay. And let's go ahead and make that an async call because we are going to use these, these, uh, the dot request, which is an async function, it's a, it returns a promise. So we can go ahead and, and do async await and let's go ahead and develop this function here. Now, the core of this is pretty simple. All we have to do is, is use the ETH send transaction RPC. So let's, let's just write this line first and let's say let result equal to await. And we're going to use that window.ethereum object. And we're going to call the request method. And now if you recall, the request method takes an object as a parameter. So we're going to go ahead and make an object literal. And now the first property of this object is going to be method. And this is where it's going to get a little different. So we're going to use the ETH send transaction. If I spell transaction correctly, if I spell transaction, transaction. And then the second property here is going to be the parameters. So I'm going to, we're going to actually create our own uh, variable that will hold this. So we'll call this params. And then being that this is a, we're doing async and await, we can just simply catch any errors. 
So we can go ahead here and say, if we get an error, just pass it into this anonymous function. And you can see here, this is how that's formatted, right? And now here, all I'm going to do is just console.log the error. Awesome. So now that seems pretty simple, but all of the meat is really in these parameters. These parameters are what declare what this actually is. So let's go ahead. And you know what? I don't have the, the actual reference up. So let's go ahead and pull this up. This is the JSON RPC endpoint reference. And we can take a look at some of the, the actual endpoints here. So we could go look at the API reference here and look for the send transaction. And here is what the parameters should look like. So we have our from address, our to address. We have our gas and gas price. So we didn't really talk too much about gas and gas price. I'm not going to go into it too much in this screencast. Um, but basically, a, a transaction on Ethereum costs 21,000 gas. Now, the actual price for each unit of gas is an open market that changes. So th that's something that you can use like the... Um, gas station, right? This this site reports what gas prices are at. And looks like we're, I'm recording this on the weekend, so it looks like the gas prices are still high on the main net, but they're not as high as they were during the week. Um, for our tests, for the actual test system, we don't have to worry too much about this, but um, you will wanna, there's ways to estimate gas, and maybe we'll go into that in, in, um, in other videos. So, we also want to send the value, so we would send our value here, and um, that's the value in Ether. Now, we're going to explore that a little bit, and then data. We're not going to really use the data property here uh, at all. This is when we're either calling into a contract or maybe creating a contract. We can actually send up the contract in the data property, and the nonce. Again, we're not going to use the nonce here. It's basically a number that we kind of increment over time. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and build this parameters. So let's go up here. And now here, let's create our params. And this is going to be an array. So this is kind of cool because you can kind of bundle together a bunch of different transactions. Now the first index in this array is going to be an object. So I'll open it up like that. Now I'm going to say from. Now. With the from address, why don't we, we know we have the accounts available. So why don't we say from is going to be accounts sub zero, which is going to be the account that we're currently looking at. And two, now we probably want to open up maybe a, um, a text field or something like that on the front end. I'm not going to do this right now because I really want to focus on just this part, which we're creating the transaction. So we could open up a, a, a text field and then feed that value into this too. So users can put in who they want to send it to. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this account here. So I'm not, I'm not changing networks. I'm going to go up to this account. I'll copy this address, and we're going to go ahead and send it to this address. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm not on this account. We're going to switch back to this account, and we'll send from that account. Awesome. So now we have a from and a to. Now we have the gas that we need to use. Now the gas, we can, it's not super clear in the documentation. I mean, it shows hexadecimal values here, which I'm assuming this needs to be a hexadecimal string, but here it says integer of the gas provided. Um, and it says integer here. So, you know, naturally I'm like, all right, I wanna pass in an integer. So let's go ahead and try that. Now, if we can't do this, which I don't think we can, we're gonna to have to convert this to hex. And there's a pretty simple way to do that. I'll show that in a, in a minute. And then we'll go say comment, and we'll say gas price. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and, and then put in 2.5 million gas, right? Which I'm using kind of the, a similar 130 GUE per unit of gas. I'm just basically multiplying them out to come to that number. So, you know, 130 times 21,000. And I think that might be a little off, but it'll be it'll be okay for the actual test network we're sending it to. So we're gonna go ahead and put up 2.5 million. Okay, so now we're gonna put the value. Now this is gonna get interesting too. I'm gonna say I want one ETH. Now we're gonna see if this actually works. Okay, so that that should be all we need. 
for the parameters of creating a transaction. So this is now going to take these params, it's going to pass it into this area right here inside of this object. It's going to pass it to this endpoint method and pipe it right through to the request call into our wallet. So is this going to do anything? It's not, right? Because we're not actually calling this function yet. So we need to call this bad boy. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go into our index and let's add another button into our snazzy UI that we're developing here. I'm going to say button on click, same exact thing that we're doing up here, the other ones, send transaction, and let's just put send transaction. Okay, awesome. So now if we go to the application, we should have a send transaction button. And now if we hit send transaction, oh, something didn't work. So we got an error here, RPC error value in the transfer parameters is not a string. Aha, uh -huh. so I think what we need to do is we need to convert these parameters to a string and convert them to hexadecimal. Luckily, we have a pretty simple way to do this. So let's jump back into our JavaScript. And now this get these three values here, I think we need to convert to hex. So let's go ahead, JavaScript makes it pretty easy here. We could just say number, and then the number object has a toString method, and the toString method has a base parameter. So we can pass in base 16, and that will convert this number to a hexadecimal string. And we'll do the same exact thing to this. So this is a nice convenient way to kind of convert to hex. And we'll do the same thing to this. Okay, awesome. So now let's go back to our application and let's click the button. All right, it popped MetaMask. So MetaMask is trying to now send a transaction. Because remember, we're not, we're not actually controlling anything in terms of private keys and stuff. MetaMask is still responsible for that. The user is still in control. So we're basically just creating this transaction object and we're giving it to the digital wallet to say, hey, can you sign this and then send this up to the network? So we still need to sign this transaction to make it valid and then broadcast it to the network. But there's a major issue here. There's no ether in this transaction. What the heck? So that's a problem. So anybody see why that's happening? We sent one here. But what does this value represent? And again, it's not crazy clear in this documentation, but this is not in ether, it's in way, which is one 10 to the 18th power of an ether. So it's, we're sending a very, very, very small amount of ether in this transaction, which is why we're going to see zero. So if we wanted to send one ether, we can actually simply just put a bunch of zeros here. So let's do that. I'm going to put 18 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, that's a lot of zeros. Now, let's go here and send transaction. And there we go. Now we have one ether. Now, in, in subsequent videos, I'm going to introduce you guys to some convenience libraries, specifically Web3.js, that has some utilities for converting between way and ether basically just does that math for us. So you can see here that, you know, we just had to make it a really big number to make it one ether. So let's go ahead and let's see if this actually works. So I'm gonna refresh this. Now I'm sending from this account to this account. So we have 104 ether here and we have 100 here. So we should see 103 and 101 when this transaction executes. So I'm gonna click send transaction and we're gonna click confirm. Now, if we look at our wallet, we should see we have a pending transaction with one ETH coming out. And we can actually take a look at this transaction on Etherscan, and we should. There it is. And we can see it's going from it to these addresses. This is kind of like the parameters object we just created, right? You can see the transaction fee, the price of gas we paid, and things like that. So after a minute or two, we should see this confirmed in our wallet. Boom, and there we go. So now this went down and now 
101 is up. Nice. So that worked. So we were able to programmatically create a transaction on the front end just using vanilla JavaScript and the Ethereum provider API. Awesome. So I hope you guys are enjoying this content. Um, in, in, next, in the next video, we're probably going to go into some convenience libraries to do things like this a little bit nicer. Um, and we're going to progress to interacting with smart contracts. So that's going to open up a whole new world of possibilities when we can learn how to really consume a lot of the smart contract APIs that are you know, being put onto the blockchain on a daily basis. So it's very exciting stuff. If you're liking this content, please give us a like. Maybe leave a comment if you have any questions. And um, just having a blast learning with you guys. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. Thanks.